TV Grace presents the inexpressible words of God, the gospel of grace on the lips of Jesus Christ men. Abba Father. Blessed with all blessing. Greetings to my beloved one that's perfected, adorned, the one that's seated in heavenly places together with me. Well, today we receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation to speak with you and to be of edification to every one of you. Today's topic is symptoms of an event to come. When you are waiting for something or something has been prophesied about or something is preached about, there are symptoms, reactions in people. And we are in the symptoms of the transformation. This to say we are reacting to that event that's to come. However, there is always a behavior. There's always manifestations from the people who are awaiting that event. For an example, there in Genesis chapter 7, verse 6, those that want to read it after, I'm not. But you know the story of, of Noah when God got tired of that generation and decided to destroy it. Uh, he said that he was going to destroy it with water. And he said to Noah, look, I want you to, uh, that you construct an ark and prophesy that it's going to rain upon the earth and a flood is coming. Well, you know what that caused, symptoms in those people and in that generation. And what were the symptoms? If we identify with it, we are going to be persecuted by those that don't believe. If we stop believing it, then we're not going to have persecution. But then there's another question. What if it starts to rain and it's true what Noah said? Then it's going to destroy us. So then, the minds of men, there are spaces in the mind where faith is manifest. That is why it says, regarding that practical faith, not the doctrinal faith of the gospel, that faith that was to come, but that faith that the heirs of faith possessed, says that that is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of those things not seen that you are waiting for. So then, in, in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 26 and 27, it says, as it was in the days of Norse, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married, they were given in marriage unto the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. You know how ridiculous it is to wait to construct an ark where many animals boarded three levels in the ark and begin to say, I'm going to construct this ark here in the city, not even near the beach. It was, let's say, in a mountain to construct an ark. No, you're crazy. How's the water going to reach that level? Well, the water reached that level. And it's, it's the same madness we have. We are saying when this body is transformed into a glorified body, you know that the press mocks what we say. And bless, that is not going to happen from night to day. That takes time. It's manifestation. In this time of silence where I hear nothing, sometimes I'm in silence, secluded, and I hear nothing. But the strange work of the angels is working with the community, with the international press, with the governments, with nations, with the great harlot. And the angel is moving on upon that whole situation. But in the silence, there's symptoms, symptoms of disbelief. There are brothers that are shaken because their confession has to be passed over by fire. 
suddenly you don't see anything and you get confused a little. There are few that has succumbed weak in the faith. Remember that Paul spoke about the weak in faith, not the weak faith, because the faith is the same, but people that are weak in faith. There are people that are weak in faith and all type of symptoms are manifest. For an example, look, Moses, this is the second symptom we're going to speak about. Moses struggled with the unbelief who saw the signs in Egypt. Moses spoke about plagues and plagues came, all types of plagues, locusts, frogs, and bloody water. They saw it, and they saw when Pharaoh had to surrender and let them go. But two or three days had gone by, they had fled, and they were on their way to the promised land, and they took gold and jewelry from Egypt. The richest of the wicked, they took along with them. But in Exodus, I'm going to read here. In Exodus, Exodus um, chapter 14, verse 11 and 12, it says that even having seen those miracles, look how they were already reacting, some of them in that community. Uh, in those, those two million of blessed that were released from Egypt with the power of God and signs, as soon as they heard the horses of Pharaoh, because God hardened the heart of Pharaoh, so he persecuted them. Immediately, look how some of them spoke. In verse 11, they said to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? Why have you done so to us and have brought us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. There are always symptoms, symptoms of unbelief. But Moses said to them, you will see the salvation of the Lord. And the Lord told Moses, what do you have in your hand? Rod, strike the water. Speak upon the water and strike it and suddenly that ocean that red sea converted into a highway a marvelous highway where they all walked through it dried out the wind separated the ocean and even having seen that there was so much disbelief manifest even after the fact that they would contaminate their children the Children would say, Dad, but weren't we better in Egypt? We had everything in Egypt. We had good music. We had great clubs. had reggaeton. But in Egypt, in the desert, there was nothing. But the Lord was there. There was health. There was prosperity. There, were, there was angelic coverage. So then there are always symptoms of an event that's to come. Moses promised liberty, but there were symptoms of disbelief. Even Jesus of Nazareth, the third symptom we're going to talk about today. It says that in Matthew's, Matthew's chapter 16, let's read those verses. Chapter 16 It says that the Lord speaking with the disciples said, Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Jesus said to them, Watch and be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Notice, they reasoned among themselves, saying, He said that because we did not bring bread, Notice that detail. You can think and say, there are spaces, channels in your mind. There are manifestations of the carnal mind within you that you can think and speak to yourself. That is where this belief is manifest. And if you enter into disbelief or doubt, then... Fear strikes, and where fear strikes, then there is terror, and then 
when terror sets in, suddenly you can take and make bad decisions. Suddenly a thought comes in, I perhaps am in a false doctrine. You're afraid of persecution. You repent of having marked yourself with 666. In Ezekiel chapter 9, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4 through 6, it says, it was a vision that Ezekiel received of the, uh, of the guilty. So then the angel says, says to his servant, Go and kill without mercy the elderly, the children. Kill them all. They are all guilty. Now, if there are some that are marked, look and make sure you don't touch them because they belong to the ministry of praise. Those are the ones that praise me day and night. The way they say it. The ones that are marcado, the ones that are marked. I've read that version in Spanish and English. Check and make sure that if some are marked, you don't touch them. So we are in times of final events. We are in the times of transformation. These are the times where the flesh speaks and is manifest. Why does it delay? You know, it's always been that way. The delays of the Lord, what it does, it's always exercise your thoughts so you can put your sight on the things of the Spirit and not on the things that you feel or see with your eyes. So then finally, the Lord says, he says, because they said, it's because we didn't bring bread. And having known this, Jesus said, why do you reason among yourself, men of little faith, because you have no bread? Don't you understand nor remember that the five loaves and 5,000 we serve and the seven loaves and 4,000 and how many baskets we gathered? How do you not understand that it isn't concerning bread that I told you to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not say to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When bread is spoken about, they're speaking about pisto, dinero, dollars, coldovas, pesos, speaking of lempiras, what is the currency from Guatemala? I'm trying to remember all the currencies. It says they worried about bread. And you know that one of the biggest lies are when the collaborator or a blessed brother is going through needs, they begin to think and to speak among themselves that's where doubt comes and a nest its form as someone said it isn't the same as for a piece of grass to fall on your head or form a nest on top of your head so then so then we are speaking of symptoms of an event to come we are awaiting the transformation of our bodies that is something that's marvelous. That is something as to say, how can the water reach that level of height to reach that ark he's built there? How it's impossible. When it rains here, it just rains and the water spread along the shore, maybe, but it says that the water covered the whole earth. The like manner is to talk about the transformation. It is an event where our bodies is going to react to a transformation where the blood is removed, then suddenly there is a science there that gives you a body that never dies, a marvelous body, a body that's transformed. Well, in the light manner in which the dead will be risen into a glorified body, our bodies will be transformed and we will be in that state for eternity, a supernatural event upon the face of the earth. But symptoms before that arrive will come. And this is the moment for you to gather yourself and be careful with the things you hear or the things you are told. 
For an example, I was also reading in Luke, Luke chapter 17, speaking of the days of the Son of Man, and apart from those days of the days of the Son of Man, Luke says, he says, but it's first necessary that he suffers many things and be rejected from this generation. But in Luke 17, verse 30, it says, it will be just like this in the day, on the day of, that the Son of Man appears. For well, the day of the Son of Man is transformed. It will be just like this. And then they asked in verse 37, and they answered, Where, Lord, how would this be? And he said to them, Wherever the body is, there is eagles. Where, bless, wherever the body is, the eagles will gather. When did the church have a body? With the diversity of religion and doctrines, there were no, there wasn't a body formed body was dismembered, different doctrine, different creeds. The body was informed. The body began to be formed in 1973 with the doctrines of the Apostle Paul, with the doctrines of the gospel of the uncircumcision that Paul left us. That's when we began to form the body. Now, tell me something. Have you seen the unity of the Spirit? Have you seen there is one church, a body, that there is a shepherd, one head? Where that body is, that's where the transformation will be manifest. And in this day, I urge you to affirm your heart with the grace of God and not with diverse opinions or diverse manifestations, experiences of what you hear or see. We are in marvelous times, the times in which the prophets would have loved to take part and experience. But this is the best day where there is provision, where remember that psalm that the psalm says that satisfies thy mouth with good things so that the youth will be renewed in you like the eagle. He satisfies you with good with a good confession, so you be renewed. He's not going to renew you. You must renew yourself with the word, with the gospel of the uncircumcision, with the gospel that will be used to judge you and to judge all nations, to define who you are. He satisfies your mouth with good. He fills it with knowledge here so that when you confess, near you is the word, near your mouth, near your heart, you yourself, rejuvenate as the eagle does. You yourself, when you can and are able to say the life of Jesus, which is in me, is manifest in this mortal body bearing fruit for healing, bearing fruit for life, bearing fruit for transformation. Blessed and hear me, you are marked. Many plagues can come against you. God has always marked his people. And you have the best mark that any body can ever experience. 666, that is the name or the number of my name. Blessed with all blessings. I love you tremendously. I love you a lot. Soon I will be again with you with another message that guarantees to bring permanent change to your edification, the church. Blessed, till next time.